I have a couple sequence problems for you this month, and we're going to start right here. We've got 738 consecutive integers that we're going to add all together. And the 178th number in this sequence is 4 million, uh, some big number. And we want the remainder when this sum is divided by 6. Uh, what are we going to do here? I mean, we could just start listing out all the numbers and adding them all up, but that's completely crazy. All right, let's see. We're going to break out one of my absolute favorite strategies for this, because I don't see anything clever to do here. It's one of my favorite strategies because everyone tells me I'm awesome at it. And it goes like this. When I can't find something smart to do, I do something stupid. All right, so that's what we're going to try right here. Now, pay attention. I'm really good at this. I can really do stupid things. What's the stupid thing to do here? Well, the stupid thing to do, let's just ignore most of the numbers in the problem. I'm going to make a much simpler problem, one that I might actually be able to solve. Instead of worrying about this 738, this 178, or this ridiculous number, I'm just going to start from 1. Start, you know, start from 1. What comes after 1 is 2, 3, 4. I'm going to take consecutive numbers starting from 1 and think about what happens when I add these up and then divide by 6. What's the remainder? Now, as I add them up, well, 1 and 2 and 3, well, that gives me 6. Well, it's, that remainder makes it back to 0. I add 4, when I have a remainder of 4, I add 5. 4 and 5 is 9, it gives me a remainder of 3. Now I'm at 9, when I add the 6, you know, 9 is 3 more than a multiple of 6. When I add the 6, I'm going to get to 15, which is also 3 more than a multiple of 6. Adding 6 doesn't really do anything, when all I care about is remainders. All right, so adding 6 is just like adding 0, right? Because I'm just going to move from 3 more than a multiple of 6 to 3 more than a multiple of 6. So adding 6 doesn't really do anything. But well, what about adding 7? Now, I added up these first six numbers here. I would have been, said, been about like 21, and that's 3 more than a multiple of 6. Now, when I add 7 to 21, that's like adding 6 and getting to 27. It's 3 more than a multiple of 6, and adding one more, getting 4 more than a multiple of 6. So adding 7, think of that as adding 6, which does nothing, and adding 1, which adds one more to the remainder, Adding 7 is the same thing as adding 1, when all we care about is the remainder when we're dividing by 6. When you add 8, it's the same as adding 2 to the remainder. You add 9 is adding 3, 10, 11. And then 12, of course, is like taking two steps, two blocks of length 6. It doesn't do anything to your remainder when you're dividing by 6. And it just keeps going like this. 13, 14, 15. These are just the remainders of each number, because that's all I really care about when I'm trying to figure out what the remainder is. When I'm adding on a new number, I just want to know what its remainder is when I divide by 6. Oh, how does that help? Why don't I start adding these up? I'm going to be added these first six numbers up here. 1 and 5 makes a 6. That's a 0 remainder. 2 and 4 is 6. That's another 0 remainder. I've got that 3 there. So when I add up this row, the remainder is 3. So I add up the first six numbers, remainder is 3. And this is true no matter where I start. I could start right here and go through here. The six numbers, boom, boom. I have a 1, I have a 2, I have a 3, I have a 4, I have a 5, I have a 0. Add those up, my remainder is going to be 3. So no matter where I start, when I add six numbers in a row, remainder is 3. Now, it's going to be true down here. It's going to be true down here. Now look what happens when I take two of these rows. When I have 12 numbers in a row, I get a 3, I get another 3. 3 and 3 is 6, the remainder is 0. So when I take the first 12 numbers, the remainder is 0. And that'll be true for any 12 in a row. Say I didn't stop here, say I stopped here instead. Now I've got this block of 6 and this block of 6. I have two 3s there for my remainders. Add those together, I get 6, which remainder is 0. So no matter where I start, if I take 12 numbers in a row, add them all up, Remainder when I divide by 6 is 0. That's pretty awesome. Because, you know, 738 up here, if I have 738 integers in a row, well, that's 738, that thing's a multiple of 12. We're all set because we can chunk them up into blocks of 12, blocks of 12. They all give us zeros and we're done. So, here we go, 738. Um, see if it's divisible by 12, that means it's divisible by 3, divisible by 4, check 3. I divide 3 into there. Let's see, I got 246. It's divisible by 3, that's awesome. It's not divisible by 4. It's even, but it's not divisible by 4. So this is not a multiple 
of 12. So I can't take that 738 consecutive numbers, put them into blocks of 12, call them all zeros, and be done with it. But it is a multiple of 6, right? It's a multiple of 3, it's a multiple of 2, it's a multiple of 6. So I can take, well, a whole bunch of blocks of 12, and they're all zero. So all, each one of those blocks of 12 gives me a zero for my remainder. And then I take that last little block of 6 that's left over, and we know that any block of 6 in a row gives us a remainder of 3. There we go. We didn't have to do anything. We didn't care about this. We didn't care about this. All that mattered was this and this. And we're done with this problem. Ready for the next one. All right, here we go. So each positive integer n, uh, a sub n, that's a sequence, is 9n plus 2, b sub n is 7n plus 3. And the values common to both sequences, and we make another sequence out of those. The nth term of that new sequence is pn plus q. And we have to find p minus q. I don't see anything smart to do with these, so I'm going to do the stupidest thing I can think of. I'm just going to start writing stuff down. I'm going to write down the sequences and see if I notice anything interesting. So I'm going to start right here. Now, each positive integer n, that means always look out for positive. So you know you're not going to have to stick a 0 in there. We're going to stick in a 1. That's going to give us 11. Stick in a 2. That gives us 20. Stick in a 3. gives us 29. And now we're taking steps. Each step is 9. Go up by 9. Go up by 9. 56. 5, 74. All right, I don't see anything too interesting yet. So let's take a look at what happens with B. We're going to do the same thing. We're just going to write them all down and see, see if we hit any of these numbers. The first one, stick a 1 in there. We've got a 10. Stick a 2 in there. We've got a 17. And we're going to take steps of length 7 all the way up. We got a 24, not in the list up there. 31's not there. 38, we have a winner. Those two match. Uh, let's see, we got 45. We got a 52. We got a 59 is not in that list. We got a 66. And again, I'm just taking steps of length 7. Uh, am I ever going to hit another one that's in that list up there? We got 94. Ah, 101. I hit another one. Oh, where am I going to hit the next one? Well, up here, I'm taking steps of length 9. Steps of length 9. So, you know, once, I, once we're at this common one, this 38, well, I'm always going to be a multiple of 9, as I go this way, away from 38. So whenever I hit a, a common term in these two sequences, it's got to be a multiple of 9 away from 38. Down here, I'm always taking steps of length 7 away from 38. So whatever common one we hit out here has to be some multiple of 7 away from 38. So it's got to be a multiple of 9 away from 38. It's got to be a multiple of 7 away from 38. That means it has to be a common multiple of 9 and 7 away from 38. Least common multiple of 9 and 7 is 63. 9 times 7 is 63. Add 63 onto 38. Boom, we hit 101. And then we take another, jump out another 63. 164 is going to be in both of these sequences. So it's a multiple of 9 away from 101. It's a multiple of 7 away from 101. And we're just going to take steps of length 63. So that tells us what P is. It's 63. Now I have to remember these are positive integers we're sticking in here. So I'm going to stick in to get figure out what P is. I have to figure out how to get 38 to come out of this when I put a 1 in there. So put a 1 in there, I need to get the 38. This is going to be minus 25. Now, of course, it looks like we've solved the problem. We have to be very careful to make sure we actually answer the question that's asked. We go back, P minus Q, 63 minus a negative 25, 63 plus 25. And that gives us 88. So just remember, the key strategy to the, both of these problems was we couldn't see something smart to do, so we did something stupid.